<laughs> you guys, all of you have to visit Goa now. They're going to host, you know. Uh, so, okay, so um, looks like everybody has joined and um, we're going to start um, even if it's a little bit early. So, uh, again, um, I'd like to welcome Sabirul Islam. I already introduced you guys to him uh, via email and, you know, I'm sure you have uh, reviewed and some, a lot of you know about him, especially in Bangladesh office. Um, and uh, Sabirul, uh, I would say is a good friend of mine now. I've been you know, talking to him for a while and, you know, we are uh, working together on a few things. And when I told him about our uh, PDC class, he was interested sharing um, his virtue with us. So this is a session. Uh, he created the presentation. Uh, what we will do, we'll um, share the uh, screen from my computer and I'm recording the session also. So um, let's start, uh, let me present, share the screen. Yeah, he has to, um, so we'll just say next when you uh, want me to go to the next um, screen. Sure, sure, okay. that's fine. Um, I'm going to start the presentation. So let me know when everybody is loaded. Okay, the floor is yours. Okay, lovely. Well, once again, hi, everyone. Um, pleasure to, to absolutely connect. And also, hello to the New York team. I didn't say hello to, to it's, it's good to reconnect with you all. Um, and uh, I, I, I hope uh, this session is actually insightful and, and uh, you're able to take something away from it. Um, the reason I, I titled it the value added personality, uh, there's, there's one very important reason behind that, because we are all in a sort of a uh, a role in, in which we play an important part in, in society, in the work that we do, in the role that we do. Uh, but more importantly, we are often fixated in, in the sort of role that we, we play within the organization, that the specific job description that you're given, that you have to do A to B, B to C, it's very, very sort of systematic in that approach. And I don't truly buy into that. I, feel, I, free, I truly feel that every one of you has the sort of personality, um, a sort of a, an, an ideology, a belief, um, and sort of characteristics uh, that you're able to sort of add more value to an organization, the role that you're playing, whether you're in Ukraine, Goa, you're in Bangladesh, or even in Team New, uh, New York. Everybody, you're a part of one family. And when you sort of identify what are your strengths, how you can sort of uh, share your strengths, your focus, um, and your values beyond what you actually, your role actually says you are, you play a very huge, important sort of um, meaning within the, the, the organization as a whole. And you help, help them not only the immediate team grow, but the team itself uh, overall grow. So we'll be focusing on that. Uh, <clears throat> so as you can see from the session focus, there are various things that I wanted to sort of, um, go through. Uh, just to very briefly go over. So the purpose, value, discovery, these are questions I'll be throwing at you. Um, and just kind of giving you a, a brief idea of how you can sort of understand a bit more about yourself. Then there's a very important, interesting part about the survey, and I'm, I want to thank you all for, for participating in the survey. Great, fascinating responses from you know, top to bottom, you know, left, right, and center. Everybody who, who, who sent over got you know, huge, huge uh, responses from that and very in interesting insight into the organization as a whole. Um, and obviously it sort of highlighted where we can sort of improve uh, as well. Um, so from there, that there was four key things which I want to discuss with you about. One is time, the other is culture, learning and confidence. So the next slide we can start off with. You can go to the next, yeah, there you go. So why am I here? So this isn't necessarily talking about me as to why I'm here talking to you. It's more about you yourself, everybody who's tuned in to, to listen in. There are three key things which I, I really want to sort of highlight to you as an individual. So if I was to share with you or say to you, what is your purpose? Why are you here? What is your specific role within, within the organization that you play, the, the role that you have, your importance? The idea of self-discovery within the role itself, because some of you have been in the organization for quite some time. Uh, some of you have been fairly new, newcomers or you had a change in sort of scenario and setting. How can you sort of use your sort of current self to identify what are your core strengths? How do you add value to the organization? These are things which you should be questioning yourself and as much as what you're supposed to be doing within your work role, within your duties as an individual, as a team collectively, and as a unit, the entire company as a whole, 
everybody has a, a sort of a unique strength and a gift in which they can add certain values. So it's about understanding what it is that you hold and what you can share with your immediate managers that you can say, this is who I am and these are the strengths that are not being utilized by the organization, uh, by the company, by, by, uh, by your immediate team. And this is what you need to do to be able to get the best out of me. Not everybody works the same way. Not everybody has the same level of capacity. Some have greater sort of energy in certain other things that they can be doing. Does that need to be highlighted? Does that need to be discovered? Or, or, or should, there, should there be a level of communication there that sort of allows you to think bigger and act bigger as well? So there's a question I ask a lot of people, um, whoever I sort of communicate with or on such, a, such a, an event or sort of a, a session like this, so over the past six months or so, if, you were, if I was to ask you, what have you done that sort of improved yourself or made you better than who you are today uh, or who you were six months ago? So in that period of that six months, what's, what's something new that you've learned? What's something new that you feel that you want to learn that you haven't learned already? And if you look six months down the line, what's the sort of targets and the skills and, and the goals you're willing to, to achieve or push yourself towards? So those are the key things that we'll sort of go through over the, the presentation as a whole yeah, in as short cram spaces as, as possible, but hopefully you'll be able to get uh, enough insight going forward. And uh, I hope that adds enough value, yes. Um, so when we look at the, the survey, um, as I say, the, it was quite a, a very, I, I'm just trying to put it all together, what was quite an interesting point. I know some of you submitted very late. I was only able to collect the feedback just before my flight uh, here. So those are the responses that I'm taking into, into sort of consideration. Uh, so up until Monday, uh, anybody who submitted later, all those feedback will be given to, uh, to, to Shahid so that he'll be able to sort of look at that in a lot more detail. But uh, the five key elements from the positive side, so I, I've kind of split the survey into two, two areas. One is the sort of positive view. What a sort of you see as being um, happy about your sort of role, your, your, what you want to do, what your sort of um, opportunities going forward, and, and there's a negative side of things. Uh, so starting with the positive, the common form of motivation that I found for everybody within life as in general uh, is family. And there's no denying that that's, that shouldn't be a motivation. That's always a big motivation for everyone. Uh, but there's one very interesting thing about motivation at work uh, with number two. Because I, my personal opinion would have been something totally different. Uh, but with you as a team collectively, it gave me a very different sort of mentality, sort of approach this, responsibilities. So for a lot of people that I've spoken to in various different companies and organizations, motivation at work, yes, responsibility is a big factor. But it's often used, usually fixated with uh, earnings. It's often usually fixated with the sort of cultural stereotype as earnings, as sort of giving back to their family, living a healthier life. But responsibilities gave me a sort of different twist that everybody, a majority of you, it was the very most common response that I got from, from you doing the survey that you love your duties, you love your role. And, and, and that's a very interesting point. The fact that you're already within a role that makes you feel happy. Um, you you sort of feel hopeful as, as, it said, as the response said. So that means you're in a position where you're willing to grow. You're willing to sort of evolve as an individual. But sometimes what you might need from that is that element of support and guidance. Um, and where it sort of comes from is this one thing that you sort of pointed out very deeply and insightfully is the, the, the self-expression. You're willing to self-express. Um, and, and that's what you wanted to gain from this session because there's one key lack of communication within the organization as a whole is that there are many people who fear the element of whatever their inner thoughts are, whatever their inner voice is telling them to be able to share with their managers to say that, no, actually what I'm doing is not to the best of my ability, but here is what I can do to be able to improve the organization or my role as a, as a, as a person or as a unit. Um, and this is what I need to be, to be doing. And uh, the other interesting aspect is the punctuality to work. So two thirds of, of you attend work on, on time, great. The other third we'll talk about. Next slide. So the, where we can improve. So the other side of the survey, so as I say, they're not, too, not so punctual to work, 35%, so just, just over a third. Least motivating um, factor about uh, the workplace, the office culture. This was 
uh, quite an interesting aspect. You love your responsibilities, but you are finding it difficult with your office culture, the office spirit. Um, so one of the things I would talk about as we go along is, is this sort of how to improve the office culture, what sort of you need to do to make changes, whether that's you in, in terms of raising self-awareness as to what you can do, your surroundings, your immediate environment, um, or as a, as a team and collectively to do that. Happiness to attend work, okay, you the, uh, need to improve that set of sense, the office environment, as I mentioned. Uh, personal improvement, uh, broaden, broadening learning. Now, this was one of the, the key highlights throughout the survey that a lot of you wanted to learn beyond what your role actually taught you. And this is actually not just within your organization, but as a universal thing that everybody has a willingness to want to learn and add more value because we are in a completely different era of time where you look at many years ago where you know, we were the manufacturing uh, years, many, many years ago, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, however many years it was, that people came specifically for their job description. You did your A to B and you went home. But we are here in an era where you come with a very limited idea of what your job actually entails. But what you learn along the way you implement in your role to broaden your sort of idea, your understanding in order to not only build on that job description, on that role itself, but to harness your skills and abilities to, broad, uh, to make the company itself you work for more successful, which makes you a better human being in the end. Um, and uh, so if you can go on to the next slide, I think we should, should sort of crack on um, with it. So the first thing when I looked at was the, not all of you are sort of punctual at work, um, almost a third of you. And, and that sort of hit me about time management. Now, time management is, is a very interesting a aspect because a lot of people think time management is just a, a single sort of idea that you come to work on time. But I don't see it just as a time management has many sort of goals and, uh, and sort of um, skills attached to it. So I picked out five. Uh, which I wanted to share with you, um, which I think are very, very interesting. Um, and I want you to take that away in order to sort of improve your time management skills. First of which, goal setting. Now, to be effective within go um, sort of goal setting, you have to sort of look at what are your sort of areas you need to sort of, in fact, let me put it this way, goal setting and prioritization as one element, self-awareness and, and motivation as another, and then focus as the third. I think that makes more sense in, in, in trying to share the, the idea that I had in mind. So with goal setting, you, you look at when you come into work, what are your sort of priorities that you have? What are, what are the sort of things that you need to do? So you begin with avoiding the things that, or eliminating things uh, that you shouldn't be performing, or if in fact handing it over to somebody else. What are, what are your sort of individual role and duties that you have to play? And you prioritize on them. You set your goal and agenda around that. Uh, because as an organization as a whole, there are many of you who play important roles within the organization. And what you shouldn't do is put yourself in front doing too many things that you're actually taking time away from what's most important within your role and what, where you can sort of get the job done. So that's one sort of element that you sort of need to focus on. How can you sort of prioritize in what you should be doing rather than scatter yourself with what you shouldn't be doing. Um, and then if, if you can sort of um, pass them on to somebody else who better, better sort of situated to be able to, to do that. Um, so, Use your time which serves your manner to, to the best of your ability. Next is self-awareness and motivation. Now, one of the things about self-awareness is that no people, no two people are the same. Um, and I cannot stress that enough, that everybody who's listening in right now, that each and every one of you like can work in a different way. You have a sort of, there's something about you that makes you tick and something that doesn't. Like for me, if I was to give you an example, when I go into uh, my workplace, my most productive hours of my day would be from 9 a.m. to about 11 a.m. Those are my most productive hours in the day. Um, and for me, I try and get the most of the most important work that I must get done during that period. No distractions, no sort of hustle and bustle around me. Just those are my times where I know I can give, give it my all. I have the most energy. I have the most, I can be the most productive. So I want each and every one of you to think, what are your sort of time frames along the day in which you are the most sort of can give your, your 110%. And if you find that some of you are your nine to 11, others are 
after lunch, or even those who are quite close to the end of the day, you work towards those time frames because no, none of you are the same. So when trying to build on that self-awareness that who are you and what sort of capabilities do you have as a team, as a unit, whether you're in Goa, in, in, in Ukraine, whether you're in Bangladesh, or even in, in, in the office in New York, you all have different time frames in which you work towards. So work towards them, but collectively come together as a unit to each and un to understand who works best at what efficient time. So that way, when you have that communication, there is no sort of distraction amongst you. That's not to say you don't work the rest of the hours. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when you have them, when you prioritize, I say goal setting and prioritize, you get your things that you most need to do that are most important for the day or for the week during those most productive hours. The rest can then be worked around those. So the whole idea of goal setting comes into play. So with self-motivation, once you're aware of what are your sort of goals and your sort of strengths and abilities are, um, there are other things that you can work on towards self-motivation. Now, a lot of you who said you don't come to work on time, just over a third of you, why? What is it about your workplace that doesn't sort of motivate you to want to wake up in the morning to come to work and actually get your job done or put in 110%? So roles can be defined very, very differently. Um, and it's, it's your best of your sort of uh, ability. But when you're aware of what you want to do, for example, let me give you another one of me examples. My way, best way of working and sort of what makes me motivated to, get to sort of kick, put on my laptop and, and start shooting it is the way I sort of situate myself on my desk. So if the, if the sun is shining one, one morning, I want to be able to have the sunlight on, onto me. It just keeps me, it just makes me feel happy. So everybody is weird. Everybody has their own sort of way. If the setting in which you're working is not motivating you enough, change that around. Where in the room would you like to work that sort of gets you going? that gets you feel energetic? Who would you like to sort of sit next to that you can sort of feel that you can learn off one another to sort of push one another? And there's always a work buddy. I've always had, I've always had wherever I've gone, there's always been that somebody who motivates me. I'm not getting things done to the best of my ability, but I see them get, I want to get doing the same thing as well. So we all have a sense of um, something that sort of gives that, us that spark that we need. And I want each and every one of you to sort of look, in, look into that a lot more deeper to find out what motivates you or what will be motivating you to get into doing a bit more for your work. Uh, and the last area of, of this slide is, is this focus. Now, there, there, are, there are two sections to this um, that, that I wrote down on my, on my notes. Uh, sort of first of which is the ability to sort of quickly identify what are the sort of important tasks uh, that you must complete on time. And the second is the, the sort of ability to block everything else. So I kind of covered that uh, as, as I was talking. So when you have that focus in you, you, with that focus, you're able to sort of split the goal setting and prioritization, the self-awareness and self-motivation into those two sort of segments. And that overall collectively helps you manage time a lot better. So it's not just about attending work on time and yes, your, your punctuality is great and you've done everything great, but it's about making sure that that entire timeline throughout the day is effective to the best of its ability to ensure you get the most work done when you're most active. You know, I, I, for me, after lunch immediately, that's when I sort of dip. That two, three hours after lunch is my worst period of the day because you, I just feel like I, I want to take a nap. But it, to just keep myself going, you sort of have to balance your sort of habits as well throughout the day. When you eat, how you eat, how much you eat, all these things. So your sort of, uh, your sort of daily habits also implement how you sort of manage time and be as productive and effective uh, as well. So do take that into consideration. Next slide. So as I mentioned, from the survey itself, one of the key things which a lot of you found demotivating was the office culture. Um, and it kind of did strike me um, quite hardly because as a, a unit, as a team, um, you, you have this uh, saying that uh, employee happiness um, brings clients success. And I want each and every one of you to live up to that sort of value to that employee happiness. So what does happiness mean for you? What is happiness? Um, one of the things that I thought would be most interesting to sort of trial out, uh, I don't know whether you already do it or not within the organization is, I, I, I have a, a friend of mine who introduced something within my sort of uh, culture, uh, within my way of work. One, um, and she's from Sweden. And in Sweden, they have something called fika. And that's, it's generally something like a, a sweet sort of something they share with, with, with people. But we sort of embedded that within our sort of work-life culture. And how we did that was 
every Friday, for example, at a certain period of the day, 3.30 to 4 p.m. Um, so whatever your last working day is, I know in Bangladesh, Friday is usually the off day, but so whenever your last working day, is, we have that 30 minute period where the entire unit as a team uh, comes together on a sort of a meeting room or whatever, or in another environment, and we just completely forget about work. But every week there'll be somebody who there's a list created where who has the responsibility of buying something that represents them. So for us, it's food. Food was the greatest culture uh, within our sort of environment. So food. So you'd be all bringing in that one individual each week will be bringing on board food for the rest of the team. It can be snacks, it can be drinks, juices, whatever it is that represents you. And then you sort of have a sort of a chitty chatty, just getting to know one another a bit more, something you don't necessarily talk about within the office space and environment. And that created a whole new culture, a whole new way of approach within the office where people are optimistic to sort of, you know, go away from that sort of everyday hustle and bustle. You're coming into work just for the sake of working. No, there's a spirit, there's a vibe, you're a team, you're a unit, a family. And so you treat it like that. And when you are a family in which, so your family share meals, family comes together. When you're having your dinner at home, everybody comes together and has something together. So it's about using that spirit. So in Sweden, they call it the, the Swedish fika, uh, or fika in general here in Sweden. Um, so we embedded that, and every Friday we do that same thing. And it just brings the whole sort of team of 15, 20 people uh, together. And this is then I replicate in whatever sort of team I went into uh, and introduce. If you, if you don't do this already, I sort of recommend that as one sort of way to improve office culture. Another thing is the 1.5 hour rule. And uh, why I think this is important, or what, what that is in, in, in first place. Uh, so we are most productive, as I say, different times of the day. <clears throat> but every one and a half hour, I encourage you to take a break, five minutes or so, do a bit of walking, go out of the building, whatever. Do something that sort of re-energizes you um, and makes you calm back. And it, it doesn't mean that, because we have, as human beings, we do feel tired. We do feel like we... Um, we struggle every every now and then and we have a habit and, and one of the key things that came from the, the survey itself is that we often have too much work crammed into us with very shorter space of time and how we can better manage that also is to sort of work effectively for a specific period of time and then take a break always take a break and then you're sort of able to refuel get something to eat whatever re-energize and carry on so every one and a half hours, I do that. And that's what gets me the most positive response over a period of uh, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day, however long I'm working for. So I want you to sort of see if that sort of works for you. Um, talk, to your, talk to your managers first, see if that's something that can be embedded within your sort of office um, and see how that sort of, how that goes. Number three, embrace and inspire employee autonomy. This is not anything new. Uh, and why I put this in red is because this was almost universal. Every single one of you, almost who, uh, a majority of you who, who um, on the survey wrote in, said you want autonomy uh, to sort of work on your own, zoned out, to just focus. Um, and I'd encourage if the managers are not doing that, because as much as of a team, if you have an open space office, um, that can often be a sort of a challenge. So how do you sort of work around that? That's something you sort of need to sort of uh, work together as a team to figure out how can you, how can employees get autonomy to work on their own to just focus on their work because other people's talk, you're on the phone constantly, you're talking to clients, you're talking to, uh, you're having meetings. That can be often a distraction in, in how you sort of, uh, your level of productivity is within the organization. So autonomy is something so important. What can you do to better shape the way the office is currently to provide them autonomy to sort of give them that free space, that private in zone and environment to just get on with their work. Because a lot of you who love responsibility, which is universally across the, the, the organization, you want that as well. Um, this one was very sort of um, simple, number four, encourage team away days. A day where you just simply go out as a team, forget about work and, and just go and enjoy yourself as human beings, as people. This can be done once every sort of um, three months, every sort of six months, you have your sort of set date. So this is more towards the managers, what you can do as a, an idea and as, as to, the, to everybody else who's working within each team to come up with those ideas. So come up with those ideas, share them with your managers. As a team, we could go out for a day of bowling, uh, go to, 
go out to a restaurant, have a drink together, whatever it is that you do, um, that you like doing. So having that unity as a team to be able to think that as a team or a family, let's go and do something on a specific day uh, and let's work towards that. And I think that brings greater sort of joy and happiness uh, to the team, to the spirit, to the office culture as well. And then finally, recognition and weekly one-to-ones. Uh, this is probably the most important of all, I think, um, because recognition is something so important to each and every one of you who wrote in on the survey. And I, and, uh, and I stress this, I can't stress this enough to, to the managers themselves that as much as uh, they're meant to get their A to Z done, A to B to whatever it is they're done on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, have a weekly one-to-one -one with them if you can. If your team is too large, create another sort of rota, you know, every two weeks or so. Have a one-to-one -one with them because there are a lot of things which they want to express which they are fearing of expressing because they don't have the confidence to sort of share it out. So what can you do as managers, as team managers, or as a sort of a department managers, however your sort of team is set up, to have a bit more of a personal connection with, uh, with your immediate team? Um, and once you're able to realize that sort of they are having that bit of struggle, they're not sort of opening up enough to something to get the best out of them. What is it about them? And I want you to sort of hold yourself back a little as well and just take on board what they have to say, even if it comes harsh, sometimes a little too direct, because then you know how they feel. And when you know how they feel, you're better able to shape them up to become uh, or shape the organization or shape yourself up as managers to be able to give back to them a lot more and work towards striving to become better managers, to give uh, your, your team uh, a better joy and a spirit that, okay, they belong here. Uh, and that's something that we need to, to sort of work towards collectively as a team to be able to sort of understand that. And these two, employee autonomy and recognition and weekly one-to-ones were the, one of the most highlights of the survey that came through. So it's something to look at. And I think um, they just want a, a, that bit of sort of shout out and everything. Um, so if you can go on to, to the next one. Uh, so self-learning. So this was another response from the, the survey. Why I did the survey is just really just to get to understand what, what, is, what is going on within the organization. Self-learning was like something like, which completely blew me away. <clears throat> the fact that it is so today, it's today's culture, it's today's spirit. We don't just live by a, a you know, job description as I wrote in the title. We are more than that as human beings, we wanna learn. Um, so there are, I don't know how the, the organization itself currently does um, further education or, or sort of out of the hours sort of education but you as an individual um out of your working hours or in between your breaks what is it that you can do to to learn to better not only your role but you as a person what skills do you currently lack um there are many platforms like linkedin provides linkedin learning um if you're a premium member on there you're able to sort of access all the sort of learning facilities uh, i'm sure you can even uh, that there are other sort of online platforms um, that provide learning, very cheap sort of ways you can learn to improve not only communication skills, so these soft skills that you have, leadership skills, uh, that the effective ways to communicate better as a team, whatever is it, there's one called uh, Udemy, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, that provides these sort of online learning um, platforms. You do a sort of a two to three hour, four hour sort of uh, learning, they have people talking um, and they provide you worksheets. So this idea of self-learning, why it's so important to the team is that you're able to bring on board external knowledge within the team. And when you bring external knowledge to the team or you build your knowledge as a whole, uh, as an individual, you grow within your role. And when you grow within your role, you're able to expand the capabilities in which you provide within that role. So then you're able to better affect and impact the team, but you're able to impact other roles within the team as well. So you're able to sort of identify, okay, maybe collectively as a team, we are not doing enough in this area. And then you're able to put forward your opinion to your manager, and then that gets taken into consideration. So all these things collectively, when you work together as a team, it sort of brings out a better you and a, and a sort of a wider sort of knowledge and understanding within the team. Um, so I, I think that's something that needs to be encouraged from top level um, down that the fact that self learning is something that we all should do and I love these sessions that you do every two weeks, uh, just to sort of impact, but I think as much as it is me talking or somebody else talking or, or Shaivai talking to, to everyone of you, 
there's you talking to yourself, which is even more important. So what skills do you lack? What passion do you have to want to learn further things uh, in life? So where, where does it come from? You know, what can you sort of add or bring to your team? And if it's not just to your team, if there's an idea that you have that you feel that the team can sort of utilize or you can personally utilize, what is it? And, and how can you sort of, under, uh, sort of uh, bring that to life? And if you require that sort of three to four hours after work to, to do that, you're not just improving you know, the organization, you're improving yourself and that can be used later on down the line, wherever sort of pathway journey you go down towards. So I want you to sort of use that as a big, big factor in your life to improve yourself, to, to broaden your sort of understanding um, and not just rely on um, the organization itself or, or myself or anybody else, but to sort of provide you that sort of insight it comes from you. Next. So this is like, um, one of the, the other aspects um, which, which I thought you might find quite useful and, and insightful, like developing confidence and power to self-express. Now, we have a, a majority of you sort of have this sort of tendency to be very shy um, or, or, or fearful of, of talking out or speaking out or actually getting your thoughts across, your feelings across. Um, and that's not something that's unusual. Um, it's actually quite a, a, a big factor. And why I asked that question as to why, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert or you're a mixture of both, or if you don't even know. Um, those who did know answered straightforward. Um, yes, they're introverts. Extrovert. But it's, what was most in, interesting is the fact that those who didn't know, and that was quite an exceptional amount of you or a number of you who didn't know whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, if you're willing to, if you express yourself, you know, all guns blazing, you know what you want and you want it there and then you're outspoken. Yes, uh, you're an extrovert. You're more likely to be an extrovert. Introverts have feelings, have thoughts, ideas, but amongst a group, a collective team in an open office, find it very difficult to share and express. And if I was to be honest with you, me, myself, if I was to categorize myself, I'm an introvert. If you put, were to put me with this team right now um, and on a normal day just to speak out about anything that I feel, I would find it difficult. And it's very weird how introverts work um, because you have great ideas, great ambitions, great way of going forward, but actually you keep it to yourself. Um, and those who don't know who, who you are, I, what I want you to sort of figure out is where your level of belief comes from. Because you hold a certain gift, but there's this inner negative voice inside you telling you not to sort of say anything or, or do anything or because, because of these sort of um, imaginations that are sort of going through in your mind that's going to hold you back and oh, actually what if I lose my job or what if I get a, a huge lecture from my, from my manager or you know, I, I don't get paid for the month or I lose a bit of my, my salary, whatever it is that's holding you back, no. What I want you to figure out and understand is that if you don't express yourself and how you feel, people who are there to help you won't be able to help you because they don't know you, they don't read minds. Um, so it, it is about get, making sure that you have courage in you to be able to ask for that help, to ask for that support. Um, and you have to build that up. It only comes from you. That confidence to have that in your next one-to-one -one that you have or your next ma meeting that you have with your manager whenever that is scheduled for. Um, and as, as I said prior in the previous slides, that managers need to do this on a more regular basis um, so that uh, everybody is supported in one way or another, no matter how big or small the team is. Um, and if there is some sort of restructure that needs to be done, that needs to be obviously sort of looked into. But I think it's so important that every individual's feelings are taken into sort of considerations. People who have lots of ideas and a lot, lot of things to share, things that are not working well, but their inner voice is holding them back. I know a lot of you who um, wrote in on the survey have said that that's one of your biggest sort of fears. Um, so I, what I want you to do is, is to be able to express yourself with, with create a feeling that in your next one-to-one -one you share how you feel who's going to stop you who's going to say to you no and this is just almost like a, a free platform to say this is what i because i say your your team your manager your your group that you work with is your family you spend most majority of your hours throughout five days four days a week however long you work for six days a week with them uh, and you're going back home at a specific period of time and you're not you know, sleeping. So with time with, with work, your colleagues is a lot more than I think, in fact, with your sort of family itself, depending on how your work-life balance is. Uh, so that's so important. Setting self-challenges, like one step at a time. 
you have to sort of understand what is your sort of next goal that you want to do? What is the sort of next step that you want to sort of build yourself up? If, if the fear of talking to your manager openly is the, such a big step, so you work one step um, behind that, or you start from scratch, talking to yourself. Talk to yourself. What is the sort of open, openly express to yourself that I need to speak about A, B, C, and D? You express what they are. And then you look at A and think, if I need to sort of change the sort of approach that I have in work, how I talk to my immediate colleagues sitting next to me, um, just or in fact, engaging a bit more, those are your first initial steps before you sort of have that courage to sort of openly express that I'm not happy with the uh, you know, so-and-so in my role, or I'm not getting the, you know, the organization or the team is not getting the best out of me, and this is what I'm more productive to do, or this is what I'm more likely to be uh, doing and, and be more successful in, in sort of achieving. So those things, you, you sort of work your way uh, up, and that's what leads to being assertive. You have to have that sort of willpower. Uh, and that sort of courage to make that stand because otherwise everybody else will continue doing on what they're meant to be doing. Everybody has a role, everybody has a sort of an agenda on their time frame, and that's what they're fixated on. Unless you speak up, you will always be sort of not left behind, but I think almost feel like um, you will personally feel that you're, you're, you're alone. Uh, and trust me, that's not what you want to feel and there's no, in no way that's how you should feel because at the end of the day, you're a team. And the team spirit um, has to be vibrant. It has to be up, upbeat. And, and if you have something openly to express, you openly express it to your manager because that's what they're there for. You can go on to the, to the next slide. And uh, so, yeah, so for me, if I can sort of wrap this up just to, before I come on to the question and answer session, uh, just to sort of understand like um, this whole sort of, idea over the, the the period of the time from having gone through the survey i've learned a lot within the organization I, and i and i feel that hopefully that sort of added enough sort of guidance if there's something you haven't learned or you wish to learn further um you can let shahid by know or and, and i can sort of put together a, a small video for you uh, going forward in, in what what sort of is is more vibrant um, and sort of a better approach for you so i've I covered those sort of four areas um, sort of time management, sort of office uh, uh, culture, uh, and you, just you personally sort of looking to develop uh, overall. And if that sort of covered the basis, then, then I'm happy. If it hasn't covered, then do, do let Shahid by now and I'll sort of come back to you. And, and I think I, I was told that last 10 minutes should be about a question and answer. So I think we've reached that sort of uh, time frame. So if there's any questions you have, please do sort of fire away. Um, and I hope you found it sort of insightful. Uh, and got the message that you sort of needed to to better yourself, but also be expressive, um, and that's the most important thing from from my, from this session. I think. Um, thank you, Sabir. Again, um, there is no requirement that you know, but we easily um, everybody we allow everyone to talk if they have any question and concern or maybe a comment. So mm -hmm. uh, I can start from here. From we we'll start from New York office. If anybody wants to say anything, if you have learned or anything um, you want to. Sure. Okay. Sure. okay, thank you, Sabrun, for taking the Absolute time pleasure. to do this. <laughs> yeah, um, it's very interesting even for us. I mean, honestly, all of these things that you talked about, I think we're all aware of. But exactly. We just weren't, we weren't just, you know, you, you brought everything together in one place and also mm -hmm. gave us a vision of how we can work on those issues and how we can improve. So I think I hope, I mean, I personally learned a lot from this and I hope everybody else also found it very useful and we do appreciate you taking the time out to do this for us. So thank you. No pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Mm, yeah. Hey Zabiro. How are you? Hey there. Hello everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, as Shahira said, I mean, many of these things, I mean, we learned over the years, but I think it's a good reminder and, and the way you explain, I think now it will be sketched in our heart <laughs> that, okay, why is it? <laughs> Uh, to work in a company like this. Uh, so I just want to say one thing, like a couple of years ago, two years ago, uh, I was missing these two points, like, okay, who am I? And not mm -hmm. as a person, but who am I in this company? Mm -hmm. right? Why I am here? The question that you yeah. asked, okay, what is my role? That I'm coming to office every single day. What purpose mm -hmm. do I serve? Or mm -hmm. what are what expected of me? Uh, I think two years ago I was thinking, okay, I'm just that go-to person to do things. Whoever mm -hmm. is saying, Got there, solve it. So I was kind of lost, but I think last few years, I mean, my roles are more defined. So now mm -hmm. I exactly know what to do or what is expected mm -hmm. of me so that I can put my heart and soul in those 
things and without worrying about like you know doing other things as well so i think sure, defining sure. that role, knowing what company expects of you is very important mm-hmm. from my point Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, and, and it's a sort of thing that was highlighted very deeply. And I, and I just think that the, the sort of hearing back from everybody who contributed in, in the survey really gave an open eye to understanding as much as it is the sort of organization feeling like they've already embracing it. Um, there are sort of issues that, that lie sort of beneath the surface that actually needs to be sort of looked into and addressed. And that comes from the immediate teams themselves. So from the headquarters sitting in, in, in New York, you know, it, it may be like sort of almost like a rosy picture, but beneath the surface, there are still individuals who need that sort of a bit of, of an extra push or need that sort of uh, support by their sort of team managers to sort of get them feeling a bit more uh, together as, as a unit and to understand what is their sort of role, why are they coming into this role, what, are, what is it that they need to, to do a bit more or learn more about their sort of roles to sort of better themselves and better their sort of team uh, over there. And, uh, and I think that, uh, as I said, the office culture, the, the sort of the time management, all these things sort of play a big factor uh, in, in how they feel and, if they, and to live up to their sort of motto of, uh, you know, employee happiness brings client success. Um, everybody needs to sort of embrace that within, their, within themselves and within the team collectively as well. I think that's important. Um, I'll let another um, office uh, to talk if anybody wants to. Um, I'll go to Ukraine. Looks like God uh, lost electricity. Uh, are you guys there, Goa? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes, oh, okay, okay. Um, so go ahead. Um, like Ukraine, anybody has any comment, question? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, first of all, thank you for the presentation. And again, as Shahara said, there is like for me personally, it's like I knew almost all these things. However, mm-hmm. it makes me think again about them. Like mm-hmm. you made me think again and again about them. So uh, I'll have I'll have to dedicate some time after the session, and I feel like maybe there will be no immediate result. However. Um, I feel like I will be able to, to make some changes to my behavior or to, to the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. No, my pleasure. And I wish you all the best of luck going forward. <laughs> um, uh, Akshata and uh, Goa team, do you guys have anyone, any comment? Uh, yeah, Shai Madhav here. Uh, hi, Sabirul. <coughs> Hello. Yeah, thank you uh, for uh, such a wonderful session. Uh, so I'll, I'll just, uh, I mean, I, I won't give any comment. I guess a lot of them said a lot of things. Rather, I will ask you one question. Uh, uh-huh. Like in the second slide about the positive things, uh, like uh, you mentioned that responsibility was one of the uh, response, like which you got uh-huh. in the, and you have, yeah. put, you, you have put it in the one of the, uh, motivational this thing of positives right so mm-hmm. you said that even you were a little surprised so I just wanted to hear a little bit more on that point mm-hmm. uh, that what way uh, you are thinking that it is positive for us and uh, like any other thoughts uh, with respect to it yeah uh, so that's a very good question because responsibilities in work um, a lot of people often shy away from that um, and the fact that the team spirit and the culture is already there, it's positive. It's it sort of, they love what they do. Uh, and, and that's collectively across the entire, you know, the team in Bangladesh, in, in, in Goa, in, in Ukraine, and in New York, everybody loves what they do. So if they love what they do, why is there sort of still so that sense of negative feeling of you know coming to to work and and really not not liking the sort of setup that's already there? And that's not to say for everybody. There are there are. Uh, certain individuals who wrote back to all in the survey. So I'm just feeding off the information I've received. So if they love their responsibilities, it just means that the setup is, is somewhat needs changing to sort of give them that perfect environment to sort of put their responsibilities and duties into best practice. Um, so they get to get the best out of them. So if they're loving what they're doing, but their setup and them as an individual don't have the sort of training or teachings or the sort of um, 
they're not up to that sort of level of uh, standard, which they feel that they can be, there has to be something that needs to be embedded in more sort of educational uh, tools to, to that individual, more sort of one-to-one that willing to, that as I say, the expression. So it's not, it's a very positive thing. I've, I've not come across it in, in, in majority of the coaching sessions. So that means the team spirit already is fantastic within, uh, within your organization. But it just means that there are tweaks that need to be made to ensure that you get the best out of your each uh, sort of team members. So uh, these are big changes that need to be made. Uh, some of people don't like their, their current setup. Majority want autonomy. Um, so it's these things which you can look at and I'll pass on all this sort of information uh, to, to Shahid by who will then sort of give the individual team managers uh, within each, each country the sort of idea as to what sort of needs to be looked into uh, further to sort of better understand the points that I'm trying to make here. Um, so, and from there you look at hardcore stats. Um, so nobody's, nobody's been named in the survey, nobody, everything's just coming from individual um, sort of, uh, you know, where they are. So I don't know if this come from Ukraine, I don't know if this come from Goa, Bangladesh, wherever. Everybody yeah. has their sort of personal feeling. And as much as the managers themselves feel like we're doing a great job, that it's always looking beyond the, beneath the surface, finding out what is it that I can do for my team immediately to better improve. They love their role, but there's something not quite right within the sort of environment in which they're working because office culture was a big factor. So what can you do to change the office spirit? How can you make your employees more happier within their role to get them more productive and effective to uh, deliver gr greater results because they love their responsibilities? You see, so there's a sort of equation there that sort of needs to be met. You've got the end result, the responsibilities are there, they love their role, but how, what can you do with the rest of the equation to ensure you get perfection or close to perfection from that individual? Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, a question from here, New York. Um, side will go. So, several it might be a little irrelevant. My question is, mm -hmm. how do I, like, is there any shortcut so I could make my team members believe in me? Well, the, the, there is no shortcut. If it was shortcuts, then the whole world would be implementing it. It's about getting to understand the strengths and weaknesses in which, which you have, your, just your team has, and, and just talking to them. Uh, I know you've got a big team. It's a big organ uh, growing to be a big organization in, in different parts of the world. So getting feedback individually might, will be tough. But you know, for me, just in the space of a couple of days, just sending this out gave me great insight, which I did not know. Uh, and I'm sure sharing, when I share that information, even Shahid, I will certainly look at them and think, okay, wow, I did not know this was sort of affecting, you know, this team member. So what can I do? So individually, you look at it, there were some really um, crazy sort of responses and some really sort of eye openers. So I put those eye openers that were sort of universal and, and you know, majority to this, but there are individuals within the sort of the group that sort of needs um, a, a bit more sort of uh, caring for, uh, I say. So there aren't any shortcuts to sort of achieving this. It's just finding a, a better way to sort of instill that uh, spirit um, within each of the teams. And it might be that Ukraine does it one way, Goa does it a completely different way. It's just different cultures, different approaches. One universal approach doesn't work. And, and as I say, self-awareness is so important. No two people or no two countries work the same. So it's just sort of blending into that. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Dhaka and Philip, do you guys have any comment? Anybody? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Shahid Bhai, I have one question. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir, Virul. Hello there. Nice meeting us here. Uh, thanks for a wonderful presentation, and it was great. And we have learned a lot from your presentation. Uh, but I have one question over there. Uh, like, uh, I have one confusion, and I need to know what is your actions and uh, what is your uh, activities to solve this problem, that kind of problem. My problem is I need to learn something, but I want to learn something else. Mm -hmm. In this confusion, what should be your actions and your reactions you should, uh, I should do or you should do? You actually do it in your life. Yeah, so for example, that goes down to time management. So for me, if I was to do something, like you, you prioritize as to what, what is the most effective over that specific period of time. So as I say, my most, my most work that I get done is during 9 to 11 in the morning because I'm most productive then. So when I prioritize whatever it is that I need to get done, that's the most important I get done during that period of the time. Anything after that, I work at a steady pace. I don't work. I don't rush. I don't, because I know what, even if I did rush, I'll burn out. So 
anything beyond that, my next sort of phase in the daytime, which I find where I'm able to be most energetic and I'm able to consume knowledge is after work. So looking at the times of 7 to 10 p.m., Though this is where my self-learning hours, when I read a book or when I go online, do some research or when I go and do a course online when I'm learning something new or if I'm working on my sort of a, um, a platforms that I, that I have uh, to sort of how can I reach out, writing my blog, doing something different. So there are different things in which you can do to better improve your knowledge. It's just how you manage your time frame. Look, we all have 24 hours in the day, but that doesn't mean 24 hours is spent the same by each and every one of you sitting uh, and listening. So you all have done something or do something something that is not of priority or is not as important, but you can sort of shift and change your work life um, pattern and habits to ensure that you're able to get effective results. So only you know um, how and what is important or not. So the next action, let's say after work, you, you go home and you're spending an hour watching television or you're spending an hour on your WhatsApp or on Facebook, uh, whatever. Is that really important? Is that going to improve yourself? Is that, you question yourself. So there, you only gain realization through questioning who, what, where, when, why, and how. If you can ask as many questions as you can under those brackets, who, what, where, when, why, and how, you know, it'll take you, you know, many months. It will take you in fact, years to come up with the most per perfect of questions to sort of better improve yourself. But if you're able to ask some more questions and the harder it is to answer them, you realize you're on a pathway to learning something new. So, you know, what can I do to, better utilize my within my time of let's say seven to eight p.m i fix that time for me to want to learn something new so you go and do some research you go and do a course you do something that sort of betters your sort of uh, knowledge within your current working role and if you're sort of somebody working within it which majority of you are you know, on the computer majority of the time so what is it about your sort of role that you have that you currently feel that you're not the strongest you want to improve on there are courses for that there are online teachings for that. There are, you know, even going on to you, if you want to, don't, don't want to spend money, there's a YouTube video that can sort of help you improve. There are your colleagues who have better knowledge of what you do. So learning to talk beyond the working hours to, to communicate. Like communication is a big factor. So it's not to say nothing is impossible. Your actions is what you do uh, in the time frame which you set out and the reaction is the sort of um, results in which you will get from putting in that time and effort, you see. So I cannot say that this is your sort of approach that you need to take to ensure this result. Only you can do that if you're able to put in the time and effort to make that action possible. Hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Last, um, select office, anybody have any comment? It's perfectly fine. We are already um, out of time, but you guys have last question. You have the last question. No? Hi, sir. Uh, this is yeah. Partho. Uh, yeah. uh, Samuel, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it is nice to have you. Uh, actually, I must say, uh, I have one comment and two questions, actually. One comment is really uh, not about this session. It's about you. Uh, then the comment <laughs> is, you are, you are not looking. Uh, uh, yes, I saw you in Silet uh, last back uh, three or five years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, you are much more brighter than that time. I mean, <laughs> okay, let me finish. Okay, brighter, not like, uh, not uh, like that. You are looking good, but uh, brighter, like you are uh, fresh. Bright. So, yeah, brighter means. I mean, it means you, look, you look fresh and young, right? He is on Greece right now, so you know, unlike yeah, us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my question is there. Is question? Question. Go ahead. <laughs> question is that how how you make yourself such brighter in uh, you know in career in uh, in also in look also I must say. and then um, and how can we uh, get that formula uh, that how you can make yourself more brighter? Uh, can I get that? sure, sure. Uh, well, thank you for the compliment. Um, if you meant brighter as in my skin tone, my wife would have probably done this. Um, uh, yes. But in general, there is, there is a way. Look, for, for me, since I, I if, you, if you came to one of my events in, in Silat uh, or any part of Bangladesh, you would have um, seen me at that phase of time. I, this is, you know, to a certain extent, I knew certain things. But over that period of uh, you know, a couple of years, 
for me, it's always about being mentored, being guided by others. And I was fortunate enough that just from the past year, year and a half or so, um, the Shahid Bhai has also been there. So he's been he's been there right under your, your nose all this time, giving guidance, support, and he's been doing the same with me as well. So I am brighter and, 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 and healthier and, and have this sort of knowledge. A lot of it is down to Shahid Bhai and also to other mentors as well who've been giving the support and guidance. And mentors don't necessarily have to be beyond the, the borders of or, or, or you know other parts of the world. They can be your managers. They can be people that who you know lives next door but it's always getting external guidance external influence because you know a certain amount of information um, and to sort of better broaden yourself you always have to have somebody who makes you feel accountable and this is one of the things that uh, I, I learned uh, through Shahid by that being uh, held accountable for your own actions or for, for the decisions you make and having someone always pinch you if you're not doing something uh, that you need to be doing and you have the sort of skills and abilities to be doing but you're working in a fantastic uh, organization who has great values great beliefs and, and, and as a collectively as a team um, you have individuals who share great information who have great knowledge in different sort of areas um, so if when you start communicating with them amongst each other you need help with something whether that's from talking to people in the New York team or talking to somebody in the Ukraine team or whatever cross uh, you know team collaboration you're able to learn so much and that way you sort of brighten yourself your knowledge and how to sort of do business um, and how to sort of get better results what is the team in Ukraine doing that's adding greater value to uh, bringing more uh, more clients or what is the team in Goa doing that sort of Bangladesh can adopt so it's these things so you, you cross collaborate in that sense but for you as an individual I always say you know external influence and, and learning beyond the realms of your nine to five or your or your nine to six whatever your timeline is uh, for your for your work those are your most active hours in which you sort of excel um, and it, it's in fact, it was it was quite challenging for me for for a period of a year to sort of really reshape and rejig from what I did and what I did. With, I'm sure you were aware that when I was in Bangladesh, the Inspire One Million was a four-year campaign which I delivered. It came to an end. So then I had to ask myself these questions: Who, what, where, when, why, and how? Where am I going? You know, who do I want to be? Who do I want to become now? What is the message that I'm trying to portray to the rest of the world? How can I better add value to myself to go beyond what I've already delivered? Um, so this has led me on a completely different um, path in life. So, you know, like this, doing coaching online uh, as one very good example, doing one-to-one -one coaching. So I don't travel as much going around the world where in fact the world comes to me now. So I communicate. So, uh, so it, it's that. So you just have to sort of tweak things as you go along to how to better utilize the current sort of um, tech growth in technology, the growth in, in other people, um, your organization as a whole, and sort of pinch key things that you feel you'll be able to sort of um, utilize in yourself, your personal um, characteristics and your sort of responsibilities and duties and your personality to grow. So these, it's not difficult things. It's things I'm sure you already know. It's again, that whole idea of what I love, the question about action and reaction to make it sure you act upon it in order to get the results that you wish to get. So it's not challenging, difficult, and you have the people there in your platform uh, within SJ Innovation, within the organization who are there, who are providing me with great support and help, um, and who you have great managers who if you openly express yourself yourselves to them, you'll be able to sort of figure out a lot more about you. Because they know you. They, they know your strengths and weaknesses, but you know yourself better. So if you feel that they're not giving you that sort of platform to sort of share that key strength that you have, openly express it to them and be held accountable for the actions you wish to take. And then that way you're able to sort of be on a pathway to sort of achieving the goals you wish to achieve. I hope that answers your question. Um, thank you, Sabirul. Uh, that would uh, conclude our session today. Um, we, I like to appreciate um, from you know, all the team members in all offices uh, that hopefully we'll have more sessions with you in future. And um, mm -hmm. thank you again. Uh, this was uh, definitely eye-opening for us, um, some of the points, and you know, I'll share you the recording, and we'll definitely talk soon. Okay? Enjoy okay. your rest of the week. Thank, thank, you, thank you very you. much. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.